Mm, potentially. Uh, well, we, well, we talk to Latinos, we find, and we have consistently found this, that it's either education, jobs, or healthcare that are either one, two, or three. This year, education came out on top. However, immigration, while it's important to about a third of Latinos, a third said it was extremely important to them personally, it hasn't rated as a top issue. When you look at the demographics, though, of Latino voters, one thing that, d that, it, that does show up is that it's a different demographic than all adult Latinos. Uh, Two-thirds of Latino registered voters are native-born, for example, but the native-borns represent less than half of all adult Hispanics. So when you're talking about issues and you're looking at the issues among Latino registered voters, while immigration doesn't rate as the top issue, it's important to some, but also all these other issues are, are important not only to Latinos but to all Americans as well. Naleo speech from John McCain. Um, now he has turned, as many in his caucus have, to border security first as an approach. But does border security first also mean border security last? Are you going to get anything else if you, if you go ahead and, uh, and do that first? Well, I think it's been said by many individuals, so, uh, and I'll have to rephrase it in a different way. When is the litmus test of border security going to be passed? Mm -hmm. We all believe in safe and smart and secure country. But if you address immigration, and this is something that both parties, regardless of what the results are on November 2nd, will have to come to a conclusion and have to work towards a solution on immigration. And if that's going to be safe and smart border enforcement, plus dealing with immigrants here and dealing with the future. We did a poll this summer, uh, Naleo did, and one of the things we found for the first time in our polls was that immigration was the top issue on ours, which typically hasn't been the trend. So immigration is constantly there for the Latino community. Both parties will have to decide how to be about pro-immigration, which is good for the economy, and will be able to address and stop future anti-immigrant ads in future elections. Maria Teresa, what, where does self-interest come in or not come in? Are people misunderstanding the vote and just assuming that people with a direct connection to immigration are going to think that it's important? I mean, Puerto Ricans, I've seen the Puerto Rican flag <laughs> flying at all these immigration, uh, the big demonstrations and marches in the big mm -hmm. cities. The Puerto Rican flag was flying prominently. Labor unions were out there. These were people who had permanent residence or citizenship, no question in their own family, but still wanted one party or the other to get it right on this issue. Right, I think you hit it on the head. The nail on the head is that it's personal, right? Because when you're walking down the street, someone doesn't know if you're documented, a U.S. citizen, or a third, fourth generation, right? And when I look at these ads, and I've been doing this now for almost 15 years, when I look at these ads, it's still painful, mm -hmm. right, as a Latino. And I was in California, and I worked very hard on 187 when I was in college, Proposition 187 that mm -hmm. Pete Wilson passed. That was basically the advent legislation to what we're seeing with SB 1070 and 22 other states. And what happened was that that was political expediency on his part because he had his eye on the prize. He wanted to become president, but it also hurt him politically long term. Mm -hmm. And I think that's what's happening is that folks are not reading their history books and seeing that California back in the mid 90s was purple. It would be sometimes red, sometimes blue. And what did it do? It galvanized the Latino community because it said they were still hurting economically. They still had you know, a hard time finding jobs. But at the end of the day, they're saying, you know, this is a vote personally because you're going against my family, myself, and my identity as an American. And that's not OK. So I think what we're going to start to see, because we are seeing a shift in where the Latino population is moving to, it's no longer California, Texas, Florida, and New York, all of a sudden we're seeing strongholds in Colorado, in Nevada, North Carolina. So they're playing for political expediency in this election, but 2012, you better believe that folks have long memories and it's not going to be the same game. SB 1070 was an interesting illustration of how does this affect me, does this not affect me works. Because early on, before Governor Brewer signed the bill, there were polls done in Arizona with large pluralities of Latinos saying, yeah, I don't, I don't want the state to be full of illegal immigrants. I don't want uh, undocumented filling the workforce. So yeah, generally, yeah, I think this is, this is okay. But once the bill was signed, once the activism began, once the public debate went national, mm -hmm. Latinos said, I'm against this, even if, I'm, if I've got a green card in my pocket, even if I've got a US passport in my pocket, I'm still against this. Their perception of their own self-interest seemed to have changed somewhere 
along the line. What happened there? Right. Can I just can I just I think what, what happened there was that all of a sudden, in legislation, it actually allowed for racial profiling and actually divided what an American looked like. It was the very first time in a long time that, that had been defined. And that's when all of a sudden it became personal. I mean, you look at the polls, 70, close to 80%, 77% of Latinos were against the Arizona law versus 60% of the population who were in favor of it. So that says, I mean, I think that should actually be some, uh, an opportunity for us to have a conversation on race and what does an American look like? And I think that's why it became so personal. I think, I think what happened there also is we saw, we saw what happened at the state level what actually happened at the national level in 2006, when the Republicans introduced that heavily anti-Hispanic bill in December of 2006, that is what sparked the immigration marches because it made it a felony to be an undocumented immigrant if that law would have passed. And Latinos, all of a sudden, to Maria Teresa's point, it was personal, whether, you had, whether your family had been here for generations or whether you just got here. It was personal because nobody was going to be able to determine whether you are here legally or not. So the, the, the opponents painted everybody in the community with the same broad brush. And that is exactly what Latinos have to fight against. Gloria? But what I would think, there's a lot of things that are happening in Arizona. First, the Latino community very much understood that in previous, the previous administration, Governor Napolitano had vetoed several versions like this in defense and responding to the Latino community that exists in Arizona. And the other thing, I think the Latino community is very sophisticated. And they very much realized and read between the lines that this SB 1070 is a crackdown and did not address the need for an individual that had been working and had been wanting to just find a way to illegalize or regularize their status in the immigration system. And so they realized that there wasn't a solution. It was going to be an economic burden. It was going to make the police officer that had been patrolling their community for safety now become possibly their enemy. And they read between the lines that it was going to be reflective on them and it was purely a political gain. Um, and so I think one of the things, and, and you can see based on some of the intimidation that's occurring in Arizona, that there are some individuals that are very afraid of the political power that the new community is going to show in 2010. Mark, go ahead. Um, uh, when we take a look at the Latinos and how much they worry about the deportation of somebody they know or even of mm -hmm. themselves, mm -hmm. half of Latinos say that they're worried about that happening. And that's even true among, when you look at the native born, a significant plurality, about, about a third, say that they're also worried about somebody they know or uh, a family member, friend, or even themselves possibly being deported. Uh, we've also asked recently about whether or not anybody had been stopped by the authorities and asked about their immigration status. In a, in a, in a new poll that we've done, we found 5% of Hispanics said that that had happened to them in the last year. Now that's down from 9% in 2008, the last time we asked that, but still 5% of 33 million adults is a relatively large number of people. Uh, furthermore, one other thing that we did find is that about a third of Latinos say that they know somebody who's been detained or deported in the last year. Mm -hmm. So the, all of this, everything around SB 1070, seems to be impacting on a personal level Latinos, both in terms of worrying and even knowing somebody who has been affected by something, not necessarily SB 1070, but something that might be related.